Hello, it's Thursday, and today we are going to be making Pegasus. That was a little enthusiastic. We're going to try that one again. A Pegasus. Why? Well, it turns out that I'm better at making wings than I am at making griffins, and then I just really wanted to use them in something, and so thus, little Pegasus. Pegasus happened. All right, let's get into tools and materials. So for today's project, you're going to need 8 ply, 100% acrylic yarn in at least one color, but I'm going to be using green and white today. You're also going to need a pair of 9mm safety eyes, as well as your 3.5mm hook, a pair of scissors, pins and needles, and some stuffing. But that's it. A written version of today's pattern will be posted on my Patreon, as well as listed on my Etsy. I will leave links in the description down below for anybody who is interested. Okay, so here is the little pegasus we're going to be making. And she's made in fewer pieces than you would expect. So the first piece we're going to make today is actually her little ears. And the reason for that is because we're going to attach them as we work up this head and body piece. So grab the color you want your ears to be. And I'm going to start by setting up a magic ring, but not working any stitches into it. So just like that. I'm then going to work three single crochet. like so and then we're going to work a picot so you start a picot by chaining three and i think the trick to them for me is that i work the first chain like a normal chain that i need to work back into and the next two really tightly so we've got our one kind of loose chain and then our two really tight ones then we insert our hook through that first chain again why we leave it rather loose and we slip stitch into it so there is our picot then Going back to our magic ring, we're going to work three more single crochet. Like so, and just pull that magic ring tight. And that is our little ear. So it's just a tiny piece, and it might seem like a really strange place to start, but it means that we'll be able to join them in the round as we go when we're making the head later, which will save you just a little bit of sewing. It's always a win. So that is the first little ear, and I'm just going to whip up another one really quickly now. Now, I know some people like to tie off their magic rings and some people don't, but you can take these two ends and tie them in a double knot just to secure your ear in place. Okay, now be careful what you say about her from this point on, she can hear you. Pop those to one side. Alrighty, so next up we are going to be making, I'm just going to flip it over, this head, neck and body piece. It's all constructed in one long piece. So basically for this piece, we start at the tip of the nose and then work backwards until we hit the butt. But for now we're just going to focus on this headpiece. So we're going to start with a magic ring of six. So and then put an increase into each stitch around to get us up to 12 stitches. Now I know this is a pretty basic way to start out and it probably didn't need step-by-step -step instructions. But in the next row, we're going to be working the nostrils, which, which might require a little bit of help. So I just thought I'd take the start of this piece pretty slowly. So just like that. So just like that. So in the next row, we're going to be creating a couple of little nostrils. Now, if you don't like the look of the nostrils on the finished piece, just replace the nostril in the pattern with a single crochet. And, and carry on. So for those nostrils, we're going to do something that I do in a lot of my patterns, and that is the triple crochet in the front loop and the slip stitch in the back loop of the same stitch. So this row starts with the first nostril. And just as a reminder, a triple crochet is when you yarn over your hook twice, insert through the front loop only of the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. You should have four loops on your hook in total. Yarn over and pull through the first two loops, yarn over and pull through the next two loops, and then yarn over and pull through the final two loops. You should leave your work looking something like this. It's got a strange little triangle to it. So that is your triple crochet. So now to complete the nostril, we're going to sort of fold that forward and find the back loop of the stitch we were just working in and work a slip stitch into it. Like so. So there we have our 
little nostril. So I'm now just going to work three single crochet and then give her a second nostril. So two and three. So here's where we're putting our next nostril, which is a triple crochet in the front loop only. And then a slip stitch in the back loop of the same stitch. Now, when we work the next row, we're going to be careful to only work in the triple crochet loops and not the slip stitch loops, okay? So if you find it helpful, at this point, you can just mark your triple crochets so that you don't accidentally add stitches to your row in the next round. I am now just going to finish that round by working seven single crochet. There we go. So the next round is 12 single crochet around. So as I mentioned, we're going to be careful to not work into the slip stitches from the previous row. And instead we are just going to work our 12 single crochet around, working in the single crochets and triple crochets from the previous row only. Like so. And the next five rows are pretty basic. So we're just going to carry on and work up the next five rows now. So there we have the base of the head forming nicely. So at this point, we're just going to stop and pop our eyes in. So for your eyes, what you want to do is find your starting magic ring and count to the seventh row. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So this is row seven here. I want to make sure that I'm on the side of the head and you'll notice that we're very flat on top and then we've got the kind of this rounded shape happening underneath that will form the jaw. So I'm on the side of the head and then I want to make sure I'm in line with this nostril and I'm going to pop the eye in there. So there's my first eye. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven in line with that nostril. Then because I work in a spiral, you may notice that my eyes are slightly crooked there. I've got one that's a little bit further back. I can sort of move that forward one row to make everything line up if I like that better. And you'll note that I have five stitches visible between my eyes. So there's also kind of like a half stitch on one side and a half stitch on the other. So check it from all angles, make sure you're happy with it and then snap your backs on. Honey, would you mind snapping the backs on these eyes for me? You make it look so easy. Thank you, hun. Okay, so in the next row, we're going to be locking in the jaw. So you'll notice that the jaw dips sort of in and under. So we're going to start by working 11 single crochet around. like so, so you should be roughly even with your second eye. And then to lock in the jaw on this side, we're going to single crochet three together. So that's basically decreasing. I used to call them decrease threes, but that's because, all right, so there's a reason I did that. <laughs> it's not just because I was crazy. It's just like you decrease by two when you want to hide it and you want to de decrease by three when you want there to be like a little bump or lump when you want it to be a visible detail. So we are single crocheting those three stitches together. So there is our first kind of jaw locked in then we're going to work a single crochet and then single crochet the next three together now i'm doing these as like invisible decreases which just means i'm inserting my hook through the front loops of the three stitches i'm decreasing through yarning over and pulling up a loop through all of them and then finishing off my stitch but uh standard decreasing will also work it'll just i think be a little bulkier which is also fine so there is our jawbone so that's the head basically done but in the next row, we're going to be attaching our ears. So I'm just going to pull those in so that we have them up. Now I'm going to start by working three single crochet to get up to the top of the head. So that's where my active stitch is currently positioned. If yours isn't here, if you're only one stitch off in either direction and your row count is otherwise correct, just either add a stitch or frog a stitch. Crochet is very forgiving about that sort of thing. So in the next two stitches, we're going to attach our first ear. Now, when you look at the ear, so when you look at the ear, You'll note that we have this single crochet on one side and this single crochet on the other. Now, when we go to attach, those are the two stitches that we're going to be working through. So I'm going to start by lining the ear up on the outside of my work. 
because we want to insert our hook through the ear first. I'm going to start by inserting the ear through that first stitch that we identified, and then through the stitch on the head as well. Like so, I'm then going to pull all those tails out of the way and insert my hook through that second stitch that we identified, so the one on the other side of that little opening. Like so, both loops, and then into the next stitch of the head. Now I am going to stop and just pull those tails from the ear up to the inside of my work. It's just it's easier to work clean and it means less ends to weave in later. And there is your first ear attached in the perfect position and you don't have to worry about sewing or fiddling or pinning or any of that junk. We love that for us, we do. I'm thinking about doing a no sew November. <laughs> Let me know in the comments how you feel about that. So then I'm going to work two single crochet just to move across the forehead. And then in the next two stitches, we're going to attach the second ear in the exact same way. So inserting your hook through the first stitch on one side of the gap, through the head, then the next stitch. So he looks a bit, he can look a little bit sort of silly and disproportionate, I think. He's actually looking pretty good on this one here, but on my pink one, he looked ridiculous is we do need to leave room for that little hairlock to come down between those ears as well. So even if yours is looking slightly disproportionate at this stage, don't worry, when you add the mane, those ears sort of shrink back into the background as more of a detail than a feature. And then we are going to work two single crochet. And then we're actually also in this row going to start building up the curve of the neck. And we start that by working three increases along the underside of this jaw. So the entire curve of that neck is actually formed by placing increases and decreases rather than having to stop and do short rows. It's something that short rows are something that I've kind of moved away from in my recent designing just because I feel like I'm discovering more sophisticated ways to put those turns in that aren't quite as visibly disruptive to the flow of the piece. So uh, I'm becoming a little bit of a short row snob. That doesn't mean that they won't ever reappear again. So there we are at the end of the round with those ears attached. So we're going to work the next six rows, which is going to curve this neck around for us. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. So there we go, we have the curve of the neck. Now his head is going to sit up at a sort of a very kind of looking up at the sky kind of angle, but once we stuff and add the mane, the weight of all of that will bend his head down a little bit. So don't worry too much if he's looking a little starry eyed. So at this point we're gonna stop and we're gonna stuff the head just because it can get a little tricky a little later in the project. And then we'll start working up the next segment, which is the chest. Pegasus does suffer from the complicated knots wonk. <laughs> Anyone who's been around for a while will, will appreciate this, I think. And that is somehow all of my stuff kind of just ends up up on a slight angle. No matter what I do to fix it, my prototypes are always sort of straight on and fine. But then whenever I replicate it, it's all just got that slight little bit of tilt to it. And at this point, I know how I, know how I would go back and fix it, but I like it. I like the little tilt. I think it gives them a lot of personality. It gives them like this very curious expression. Oh, and that's just what I was talking about there. Sorry, I just changed sentence abruptly. The, how like that stuffing weighs the head down a little bit. And once we've attached the mane, it'll weigh it down a little bit more. So it's kind of working with gravity to kind of make the pose that we're after. I should make chess pieces. Do you guys want to see me make chess pieces? I think that'd be really cool. Okay, and now we're going to start working up the curve of the chest. So to do this, we're going to use that technique that I picked up from Skein Spider, uh, and that is loading half double crochets along one edge and just regular single crochets along the other. It gives you just this very subtle little pivot to your work, which is going to help straighten us out as we head into the back. So we're going to repeat this row three times, but I'm only going to show you once, okay? So we start by working five single crochet. Like so. And then we're going to work nine half double crochet. Now we're using US crochet terms here. And a half double crochet is when you yarn over your hook, insert through the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, got three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three. And all it does is create this slightly taller stitch that's basically otherwise the same as a single crochet. So it's that little bit of extra height that helps turn the work when you're using shorter stitches on one side and longer stitches on the other. So go ahead and work nine of those around. So 
like so, so they should fall along the front of the chest. And then you're going to work four single crochet to finish that round off. Like so. And you're going to repeat that row two more times. Just like so. So what you'll see there is it's taken our rows and changed the angle of them very slightly. So we were heading down in this direction and now we've just sort of tilted a little bit and we're heading out in this direction instead. So now basically all we're going to do is work up the final eight rows to finish off this back and close off the butt. And we're going to do that now. So after you've finished off, you'll be left with this little opening at the back, which is a, not a flattering look for a dainty Pegasus. So we're just going to take the remaining tail and weave it through the front loops of all six of those stitches. And pull tight to close. It's kind of like a little reverse magic ring. Got stuck. There we go. So there is the head and body of our dainty little Pegasus. Alrighty, so next up we're going to make her front legs. Now the front legs and back legs are actually the same up to a certain point. So we'll make the front legs which are sort of straighter and a good practice and then we'll make the back legs straight afterwards. Okay, so for the feet we start with the hoofs. So that means that I'm going to start in the accent colour that I've chosen for today which is this grassy green. And I'm going to start with a pretty standard magic ring of six single crochet. So just like that. And now we want to grow it to nine stitches around instead of six. So we're going to do three repeats of a single crochet. And then an increase. So there is the base of our foot. Now the real trick to these hooves is that you want to have a really distinct separation between what is the hoof and what is the leg. So you'll see we've got a really sharp, nice line there. We also have this really sharp, nice line down the bottom as well. It's just a very clearly defined piece, if I do say so myself. So how we accomplish that is through the use of back post single crochet and front post single crochet. For row three, we're going to work nine back post single crochet around the foot. All single crochets have two loops at the top. You should be fairly familiar with those. When we're working around the posts, it means that we're working around this little stem of the stitch that sits under the loops. And because this is back post single crochet, it means I'm inserting my hook from the back of the work, round the post, and then back through the back of the work. And then working my single crochet as normal. So we'll be working nine of those around, all from the back of the piece, around the post and back to the back of the piece. Just like that. You should note that you've got kind of like a very flat plane and we've built up this little ridge around it. Now, for the next row, we're swapping back to regular single crochet, so working through the loops. And because we're swapping from post stitching back to regular stitching, we're going to count backwards from our hook to work out where our next stitch should go. There's kind of two main candidates. It looks like it might go there, but we'll probably find it belongs there. So we're going to just count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and I've nailed it. So this is not the next stitch. This is. I find that when swapping between post stitching and regular stitching, you I tend to always gain or lose a stitch if I don't count. So just make it a habit and you'll save yourself a lot of pain. So we're going to just work nine single crochet around. Like so, like so. So there is our hoof. And now what we want to do is swap to our leg color and continue working up from there. So we're going to change our colour in the last stitch before we need the new colour to be active, which means that ninth stitch we just worked. I'm going to frog it and we'll do our colour change in there instead. So how I change colours for this piece 
is I insert my hook through the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop of my old colour, just like I was working a regular single crochet. Then I'm going to hold that green out of the way and grab a strand of the colour I'm changing to, which in this case is white, and I'm going to line that up with the hook as well and pinch it at the base of that stitch. So you see that I'm pinching it on the back, it's lined up with my green yarn, I've got my two loops on my hook, and I've got the strand out the front. I'm going to yarn over with that new colour and pull through both of those loops. The stitch is going to look a little wibbly wobbly, and I'm just going to tug on the old green strand to help it settle into place. So what we have there is a single crochet completed in our old colour, but our new colour is on our hook, ready to start the next row. Now you can trim the green off at this point. I like to wait until I'm one row in just to make sure everything's really just locked into place. So the next row we're going to be working is nine front post single crochet. So same theory as working back post single crochet, but this time we're inserting our hook from the front of the work back to the front. So you, this one here is a lot easier to show on camera. You see that we're wrapped around the little post and working our single crochet. So we're going to work nine of those around, all as front post single crochet. So at this point I'm comfortable to trim off that green. You can knot that green strand and the white strand together if you want. I've never found it to be a necessary part of the process, but some people just really like to like lock down their work and I respect that. And from here on out, we'll be working single crochet just through the loops. There's no more post stitching. So you can count backwards from your hook at this point as well to identify your next stitch. But because we started with a white stitch, I can tell straight away that that's where this next row starts. And we're basically just gonna work the next 10 rows to finish building up the leg. And finish off. Now we are going to leave the top of this leg open, but I am going to take a little bit of stuffing and just stuff up until this narrowest point of the leg. So just the foot part and then this leg part is going to be empty. So I'm not stuffing it very firmly. It, it's just a matter of getting that piece to hold its shape. And you'll note that we've got this little zigzag and that should fall at the back of the foot. So that tells you which way is forward as well. Now your Pegasus is of course going to need two front legs. So just give me one second here. Ta-da! So there are our two front legs. So pop those to one side and we'll start making the back legs. So as I mentioned, the back legs are the same as the front legs for the first 11 rows. So you should follow those instructions up to row 11, and that should all be on your screen at the moment. So just like that, that's the foot. And we are just going to stuff it at this point as well, because after this row, there will be no more stuffing to add. May as well get that done while it makes sense. There we go. So from here we're going to work up the back leg. So the back leg we basically build up this little spoon shape and we do that basically by loading different numbers of increases at the front and back of the leg while keeping single crochets in between to keep it a nice flat shape. So we're basically going to go ahead and work up those eight rows now. And finish off. So this little zigzaggy bit at the back of the hoof is still the back of the hoof, but you'll notice that your leg is kind of curling at a weird kind of angle. And what I want you to do is grab the top of that spoon and the bottom of the foot and bend them. And just like that, you'll have the correct shape for your leg. Now you are left with this little opening at the top and we are going to do the same thing we did for the horse's butt. And that is weave this remaining tail through the front loops of those stitches and pull tight to close. So there is your back leg. Obviously we are going to need two of those. So just give me a second here. Ah, and there are our back legs. And can I just say, how's that for yarn chicken? 
gonna have to do my wings in a different colour, but it's not too bad at all. I might get one wing out of this, actually. So now we have two front legs, two back legs, and his body. I'm just gonna take a moment and we're gonna pin these pieces together. Call in the pumpkin turtle. So we're gonna start with the front legs. So as I mentioned, we have a defined back of the leg and you should identify that. And then squish the top of the leg flat and line it up with the edge of the front of the chest. I'm just gonna chuck a couple of holding pins in there because we will refine this position in a moment. So turn it over. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Squish the top flat, line it up with the front of the chest, try and make sure that the feet will be parallel with the ground. Chuck a couple of pins in. So at this point, you should look at him from the front and mine's gotten a little twisted. So what I might do is adjust the twist of my legs just by moving them sort of slightly up or slightly down, straightens out. Uh, that, that tilt to the head, which was there already just because when we stitched it, but it's not quite as extreme now. Make sure that both front feet touch the ground. And they do, so that's pretty even. I'm going to put a third stitch in just to lock that place. Triangle is the strongest shape. Then we're going to grab our back leg. So as I have mentioned, we've got the back of the hoof, and then this spoon part should bend towards the front, even if it means you have to grab it and bend it that way yourself. And we're going to just line that up so that the back of the leg lines up with the back of the body. And once again, just sort of chuck a couple of pins in. It's a larger piece, so I will use three to start with this time. Turn it over and do the same thing on the other side. You'll note that I'm trying to keep my feet kind of even and lined up. And then we do the wobble test. And my feet are not even. Look at that. It falls straight over. And it shouldn't at this point. So what I'm going to do is look at my feet from underneath and I can see that this back foot is clearly sort of further down than the one next to it. So I'm just going to move that one up a little bit. There we go. Stability has been restored. So because the position of these legs don't interfere with the position of the mane or the tail or the wings, we can actually stop and sew this on now. So I'm going to be using the same colour yarn as I've used for my body. And there's no right or wrong way to really approach this. So for these front legs, I'm going to stitch, making sure I go through both layers of the leg and into the body, just along this top edge, and then a little bit down the side to hold them sort of straight where we want them. Then for these back legs, I'm going to basically stitch around the perimeter of the spoon. So we're just going to do that now. Okay, so with our little naked pony all ready to go, we're going to now make his mane and his tail. So we'll start with the tail just because it's a simpler piece. We're going to start at the top and then work a series of rows using those half double crochet and single crochet rows like we did to form the neck and chest to curve the tail before we finish off at the tip. the whole little peanut gallery here now. So there is the finished tail, pop it to one side and now we're going to make the mane. Okay so next up we're going to make the mane. Now this mane is all actually made as one piece even though it looks like four separate sections. So grab the colour you want to use, which for me is more of this grassy green colour, and I'm going to start by chaining 13. Now for those of you who are wondering it's 13 because we need four sets of three chains and then a turning chain at the end. So there is our base. Now we are going to use this base to form basically four tentacles of it. So turn your work and we're going to start in the second chain from our hook and start by working three single crochet along those chains. Like so. And then you're going to just turn your work 180 degrees. Okay, so 
this tail end is now pointing out towards the right for me. And you're going to identify the other side of the three chains you've just worked into. So I can see them here, there's one, two, and three. And I'm going to work three single crochet into those three, sort of, I don't know, back loops? What do you call the other side of the chain? Like so. So what we've got here, this little tadpole, is six single crochet in a loop, and then we have nine chains sort of tailing off the end. So this loop here, we're going to work in a spiral to form the, it's the very first little tentacle, it's the one that goes between the ears, and that's what we're going to work in now, and then we'll basically finish off this one and reattach to form the next one along. So I'm going to work eight rows of six single crochet around. And for, for patterns like this, sometimes it's way easier just to count the total number of stitches rather than counting eight lots of six. And so I'm going to count until I hit 48 stitches. So just like that. And then we want to taper it off into a little bit more of a point so we don't want a blunt end to it. And so we are going to decrease. and then work four single crochet to finish that round. And you'll note that I'm not stuffing this piece at all. That's because we need it to maintain its flexibility so that we can pose it properly later. So that brings us down to five single crochet around and then I'm going to literally work five single crochet around for the final row. So, and then finish off. So weave the remaining tail around to close this little opening off. Like so, you see that gives us this nice little tapered point. I'm going to tuck the rest of this strand away. There we go. So that is our little sort of fringe strand that will fall down between the ears and sort of curl upwards. And now we need to join on and make our second little tentacle. So grabbing same color again if you're using the same color, different color if you want stripes. Just attach to your hook with a slip knot. And then what you want to do is make sure that the tail of chains is facing your left hand side or basically the hand away from where your hook is. So you want to make sure that you have nine chains and that you're attaching in the next available chain on the loop closest to you and work three single crochet along. Like so, and then we're gonna turn it again so that the chains are now facing the hand with the hook. Identify the other side of each of the chains we've just worked into and work three single crochet back. Now, if you struggle with working with chains like this, what you can do is after you make your base chain of 13, work 12 single crochet along it, and then basically do the same thing, but instead of looking for front loops and back loops and chains, you'll be looking for them in single crochet, which can be a little easier to spot. It just means that your main will end up a little longer and your segments will start slightly further down. So there's my three back along. And so, there is the new loop. Basically that's how it's going to go for the rest of the tentacles. So for this one here we're going to do 13 more rows of six single crochet and then do the same decrease four single crochet and then five single crochet to finish off. And then I'm just going to rejoin in the next chain and do it again and then rejoin in the last chain and do it again. So that's what we're going to do now. And that creepy looking thing is the finished mane. So we're just gonna pop that to one side. 
Okay, so now that we have our finished mane and our tail, we are going to pin those in place just in case anybody here is looking for just a regular pony. There is always like an order to these things. We'll grab our little assistant and we're going to start with the mane just because the tail is a pretty obvious attach end to butt kind of deal. Or salad fingers. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, so we're going to take our creepy little tentacles and we're going to pin them in place on our pony. So first up, identify the shortest one. We've got a short one and then three that are about the same length. So this one here is the one that goes at the front. And what you're going to do is take that middle chain and pin it down between the ears so that it is relatively centered. Rough is fine, approximately centered is good. Then I'm going to take the far corner, which is on the other end of the sort of the three main tentacles and I'm going to line that up with the base of the neck. You don't want it stretching too far down the back because we need to leave room for wings. It's just going to squidgy them a little bit. Pin that there carefully so as to not like stab through the neck into your finger. Some creations require a blood sacrifice and this should not be one of them. Then I'm going to just chuck another couple of pins in to secure it along that sort of main neck. There we go. So she's looking a little bit windswept. <laughs> she's a unicorn. No, she's not. Um, all right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to give her a little bit of shaping. So I'm going to grab one furthest from her head and I'm just going to curl it around into the back of her leg, just like that. So all I did is I grabbed it and I twisted it a little bit and then I'm going to pin it against her leg like so. So I'm going to grab that one, I'm going to twist it in the same way, and then I'm going to pin it to the one just below it. There we go. And then we're going to grab our last remaining long one and do the same thing as well. So you want to tuck it behind the ear and then curl it down with the others. So now that's lying down nicely. We still kind of have a little bit of a bad hair day happening up here. So what we want to do is pin... First of all, that top corner just down to where it wants to naturally sit. And then grab the end of it and you just want to twist it down and back as though it was curling around that ear. You can of course style your mane however you would like, but that is how we get the same hairstyle all of the others are wearing as well. And then the tail, identify your starting magic ring and you'll note that there is kind of like a curving outside and a curving inside or straight side. Straight side goes against the body. So pin the magic ring to roughly where the end of the spine would be. And a couple of pins should just secure that in place. Now you can stop and sew those pieces on now if you would like. I recommend waiting until after we've made the wings because then you can make sure you've left enough space. So that's where we're leaving that. We're going to pop her to one side. Okay, and last but not least, we're going to be making these little wings. Now each wing is made entirely in one piece. It's a little bit freeform, so I hope you're comfortable with that kind of construction. They were originally going to be for a griffin and they will be for a griffin again, but in the meantime, we're making Pegasi. Pegussy? Let's, okay, let's just all agree to not call them Pegussy. I'm too old to know what the implications of Ussy is, while also knowing that it's funny that I've done it. So uh, that's a dangerous area to be in. Anywho, wings. So I'm gonna make my wings white, though as you can see, like with the pink one, I matched them to the body color. With the yellow one, I, I sort of gave it a third accent color. So you can do what you like with it. You can even make sort of the three layers, three different colors if you wanted to. Okay, so these wings start out really, really simple. Okay, so we're gonna start with a magic ring of six. So there is our magic ring of six. We are then going to put an increase into each stitch around to bring us up to 12. Like so. And then we're going to do a round of six repeats of a single crochet and then an increase to bring us up to 18 stitches around. At this point, I know you're looking at your wing and saying, that looks nothing like a wing. Trust the process, my friend, trust the process.
So there we go. I've just, you should double check to make sure you've got 18 stitches around. And this is where we start going a little bit more off-road with our solution. Okay, so we are going to chain one and you're going to fold it in half so that your little chain point is sticking out one end and forming just this little taco, right? Going from pizza to a taco. Now this first stitch is possibly the hardest stitch in the whole pony, right? What we are going to be doing is working through pairs of inner loops to, to sort of seal this little taco shut, right? <laughs> So what you want to do is pick up the back loop or inner loop only of the next stitch around and then also just contort it around however you have to to pick up the back loop or inner loop only of the stitch we literally just completed. So that's why we chain one just to give us a little bit more space to do that in. So we're clear on exactly what I've done there. I, I have three loops on my hook and what I'm going to do is work that's my first single crochet and I'm going to work two more through that little opening. So I have three single crochet through both of those back loops. I'm then going to pick up the next pair of back loops. So one from one side and one from the other. And I'm just going to slip stitch. All right? Pick up the next pair of back loops. And I'm going to work three single crochet and I'm basically just repeating this the whole way along. So I'm going to do three single crochet and then a slip stitch and three single crochet and then a slip stitch. The next pair of loops. So I've got two little wing feathers. Next set of loops and we're going to work three single crochet. And the next set, yep, that's right, a slip stitch. Okay, we have one more little feather to do. So pick up the pair of loops and work your three single crochet. Okay, and then you should have two sets of loops left. So in the next one, we are going to slip stitch. And then in the final set, which can be a little bit tricky to spot, just do your best. We are going to slip stitch again. So we've got two slip stitches. Now the end with two slip stitches is the end that goes against the body. So there is sort of the first stage of our wing. You can actually stop there. It makes for like a cute little baby wing before it has its proper like long flying feathers. Pin feathers, I think they're called. Me trying to use technical terms that always ends so well. And I'm just going to stop and tuck this end into the little taco just because uh, otherwise it's going to annoy me by flapping around. Okay, so next up we're going to be working in the front loops that we didn't use. But for one wing we'll be using the front loops on the side facing away from us. And on the other one we'll be using the front loops on the side facing towards us. I'm going to use the front loops facing towards me first to create the right wing. So I'm going to find the first front loop that we didn't use on that side and I'm going to insert my hook into it. It can be a little bit squishy but we'll find it, see how close it was to where we were. And I'm going to start this row by working two slip stitches. So one in that first little loop and then one in the next loop up. There we go. So that is still the end that goes against the body. We've got two slip stitches when we were making the small feathers and now two slip stitches where we're making the big feathers. And now we are going to make our first feather and it starts with us slip stitching into the next one up. And then I'm going to chain four. Just like so. I'm going to turn and working into those chains, starting in the second chain from my hook, work three single crochet down. So just like that. So just like so. Then you're going to find the next front loop along and slip stitch into that. So there is our first tiny little baby feather. So the way this works is we do three short feathers and then three long feathers. So that's our first short feather. And so now we're going to build up our next one. So chain four, turn and start in the second chain from your hook. Work three single crochet back down those chains. 
so find the next front loop along and slip stitch into it. So there is our second one. So we're going to do one more short feather, so chain four. Turn, start in the second chain from your hook, work three single crochet down. Don't worry too much if the feathers you've already made get a little crumpled in this process. They're going to poke right back out the second you give them a little tug. Find the next front loop along and slip stitch into it. So there are our three little feathers and now we have three big feathers that we're going to make. So what we do is chain six. They're made the exact same way, it's just we have a longer starting chain basically. So there is my six. I'm going to turn. Starting in the second chain from my hook, I'm going to work five single crochet down. Find the next front loop along on the base, slip stitch into it. So it's our first big feather and we're going to make two more. You're probably sick of my voice, but I'm still going to talk you through them. So chain six, turn and work five single crochet back down. And then slip stitch. Make sure you're not losing any front loops in this process. You need every one you can get. And then the final feather, chain six. Turn and work five single crochet down. Find your final little front loop. And slip stitch into it and then we're going to do something which kind of like cements this as a very freeform piece and that is find a convenient gap along that top edge so it basically we're working between the stitches now and I'm just going to slip stitch again and that's just going to help hold this little top feather in line with the rest of the wing and finish off So I'm just going to give each of these feathers a little bit of a gentle pull, which is going to sort of uncrumple them if they've gotten a little bit squished. So you see what I mean? We've got our three short, now three long. I'm going to take this end and tuck it away in between the layers of the taco. Which you didn't know that Pegasi required tacos, but he doesn't want tacos. And there is our first wing. So now we just need to do the exact same thing, but for the left wing. So pop that one down. And I'm basically going to follow the exact same steps up until we get to the start of making the larger feathers. Like so. So we're back to our little frilly taco with our front loops on the side facing us and the front loops on the side facing away. So this time I want to make my left wing, which means I want to use the loops on the side facing away from me. But other than that, it's the exact same process. It's just instead of working with the frill facing up so that I can access these loops, I'm going to work with the frill facing me. So that I can access these loops. And then once again that final stitch is going to be worked in between some of the stitches of that little base piece to hold that feather in line. Push off and give those little feathers a little tug. You'll have to do that again probably after you've sewn them on as well just to get them to sit right. And there is your left wing. So basically all you need to know about those wings is, is the plain side faces inward, the frilly side faces outward, the side with the short feathers goes against the body, and then you're just going to pin them kind of the tops of the front legs, but roughly where those shoulder blades would sit if you're familiar with kind of anatomy. It's just like they kind of sit behind the arms on bipeds behind the front legs on quadrupeds and that's kind of what I was saying about this mane is that you might need to scooch it up a little bit or scooch your wings down a little bit to make them fit and even though there's more room on one side than the other make sure that they are balanced and lined up and straight because otherwise your pony will not be able to fly so there we go so now I'm just going to sew all of these pieces on I'm actually going to take these wings back off for now just so that I can have proper access in order to do that, I'm going to use some of my green to sew the mane and tail on, and then some of my white to sew the wings on. So I'm going to start by sewing the tail on just because I feel like it's most likely to fall off as I twist around to try and sew the mane on, and that's as good a reason as any. I do try and insert my needle in the gaps between the stitches only. It gives you a more seamless appearance. 
than it will if you just stab the needle like sort of through the stitch. And I'm only sewing on just the very sort of tippy tip tip of this tail so it has sort of a little bit of a range of movement. Particularly if this is going to be a toy for children you're going to want to make sure that you really sew these pieces on. Can you imagine the trauma? The tug test. Okay, and so now that brings us to the mane. Now we've already kind of styled the mane, but the first bit we're actually going to sew on is this hairline to the neck and to the forehead. So we're going to just ignore where, how all these strands are sitting for now. Just sew this to the head and neck and just really securely sew the hairline down on this mane. There we are. So I have secured down the entire hairline and now I just need to sort of style the hair. And how we do that is actually really, really simple. So because I started at the back and I finished at the front, I'm just going to insert my needle all the way down through this strand so it comes out the tip. You might find that easier to unpin and do it while it's straight if you're dealing with a straight needle. I have the perk of a curved needle, which does, I think, make this a little bit easier to do. Yeah, so just all the way through until it's out the tip. What you do is you just line it up where you want it to sit and we're going to work just a little stitch through that bit of the mane. And I'm going to do a second stitch. Lock that sucker in. So there we go, that's our fringe secured in place. Would that our own hair was that easy to wrangle. And now what I'm going to do is insert my needle and thread it back out to a sort of around the midpoint of the remaining length of that mane. So about there. And then all I'm going to do is basically put one big stitch through all these three pieces of the mane. So I'm going to insert it there and poke it all the way through to the far side. Like I said, it's the cheatiest thing ever. Pull it, you don't want it to pucker, but you want them to stay together. And do another just little tiny locking stitch on the far side to hold that in place. Then what we do is we take all of our pins out and see if it's sitting nicely. What I'm going to do is maybe just put one tiny little stitch from the underside of the mane into the body to hold it in place against the body. It's actually technically through the leg just because of where it's lining up. And that's also just going to help me tuck that end away out through the body. Just like so. So I'm going to clean that all up. So there is our mane and our tail all sewn on. Looking lovely, darling. Truly. So then I've just got my wings and I'm going to pin them basically back to the, the shoulder blades or that small of the back. Chuck a couple of pins in for extra security so they don't fall out while we're sewing. Two, once again, don't worry too much if your feathers get a little bit ruffled. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, don't worry too much if your feathers get a little bit ruffled while we're pinning and sewing them. You can always just sort of give them a little pull and they sit flat again pretty nicely. So it's better to pin twice, three times, four times, five times, than have to unpick your sewing. So um, always just take your time with pinning. I tend to rush through it a little bit, but that's because by the time I film, I've made three of them in probably the same day. And uh, I, I've got I've got a feel for where things go, but like there's no shame in taking like time really carefully to pin. Make sure you're really really happy with the location of things. Then thread your needle with whatever color matches your wings, which for me is some more white. And we're just going to sew the very base of the wing to the body. And there is your finished Pegasus. Well, I hope you had fun making these little fruity coloured gals with me today. Uh, let me know in the comments how you feel about a matching griffin to go with them. Just because that's what these wings were originally intended for and I'm feeling a little bit weird about leaving him out now. So, yeah, let me know how you feel about that. <laughs> 
So yeah, I hope you had fun making Pegasus with me today. But other than that, I will see you next week. Okay, bye.